If you take the face value for FIFA rankings, and that's what you use to determine the entirety of the World Cup, you're going to be in for a surprise because if you guys have ever watched the World Cup before, you know that it's not going to go perfectly according to plan. But here's the thing. In Group C, if you take the face value of these FIFA rankings, it's pretty easy to just say outright Mexico and Argentina are getting out of this group. But here's the thing. I want to bring up a comment that somebody left in the last video, Bibui, and I love comments like this because we can talk about them in the next videos. He says that the AFC, the Asian Confederation, is actually overall more talented than the North American Confederation, CONCACAF. And there is some truth to this. In fact, I think that this statement alone is correct. Because if you take into consideration all of the Caribbean island nations that are within CONCACAF, Turks and Caicos, U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, Haiti, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, etc., etc. The list goes on. None of these countries have the population or the resources to compete at a higher level or probably will ever make it to a World Cup, even with there being an extension to 48 teams in the uh, coming World Cups. I still don't think many of these countries could ever compete at that level. So if you take the average from the North American continent, and you can include all these Caribbean islands, the average of talent is probably much lower than the Asian Confederation. But that is a different question than what's the more difficult confederation to qualify for the World Cup for, especially this year. Obviously, that changes in future years where the CONCACAF goes from three and a half to six teams, while the Asian Confederation goes from four and a half to eight teams. But right now, CONCACAF gets three and a half spots. That means three go, and the fourth gets to go into a playoff with another continent or another confederation. Now, Costa Rica just played that game against New Zealand, which was the half that comes out of the Oceanic region, and Costa Rica went to the World Cup. Same thing for the Asian Confederation, except for there's four and a half. So that fifth team, which was Australia, ended up playing against Peru, who I think is a pretty solid team. And normally, the players or the teams that come out of the South American CONMEBOL Confederation are normally the team that end up winning that playoff game, and they didn't this year, which proves that the top teams in Asia should be able to compete at the highest level of all the teams in the world. If they can beat Peru, their fifth team can beat Peru. Surely the team that's first or second can beat some of the best teams in the world. And now that logic does seem sound, but if you take a look at who Australia uh, or Saudi Arabia, especially, which is who's in Group C, have played, Saudi Arabia haven't played anybody of importance in the last four years. And the only teams that they've played out of the Conway Bowl have been in this last month when they played Venezuela and Colombia, both teams who haven't qualified for the World Cup at all, both beat Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia lost both those games. And the last time they played a competitive match against a UEFA team, they lost that game 5-0 to the lowest ranked UEFA team in the World Cup, Russia. Say what you will about Russia and how they were underrated, but 5-0 is 5-0, okay? And Saudi Arabia, although consistent during the qualifiers and beating teams that are the lesser countries in Asia, they were just squeaking out 1-0 victories against teams like Vietnam, okay? And you really should be beating teams like Vietnam. More than one nothing if you want to go up against Argentina and expect a result, okay? So I don't think Saudi Arabia is overrated, and I do believe that the Asian Confederation is probably a little bit easier to qualify from than CONCACAF. Because CONCACAF, despite the fact that there are so many terrible nations that compete in CONCACAF, the top level is still pretty high. You've got Canada, who actually topped the qualifiers for the first time in a long time, if ever. Mexico, who's always a team that competes. USA, who pretty consistently competes despite their shortcoming in 2017. And then you've also got teams like Costa Rica, who, when they went to the World Cup in 2014, not only did they get out of a tough group, but they ended up going to the round of eight just to barely lose to the Netherlands. And Mexico, every time that they've gone to the World Cup for the past decade, they've gotten out of their group as well. And when USA went to the World Cup in 2014, they got out of the uh, group. Whether they play above their level in the World Cup or not, CONCACAF has been a team uh, has been a confederation that competes in the World Cup, gets out of their group, and actually gets to the knockout stage and sometimes does something. Are they going to compete to win a World Cup? Probably not.
I don't think any of the teams from CONCACAF or the AFC are going to, but I do believe that the CONCACAF has teams that have a higher ceiling. Costa Rica ended up finishing fourth in CONCACAF, and I feel like Costa Rica would pretty easily qualify through AFC. But that's just my opinion, and that could be completely wrong and biased. Let me know what you guys think down below, and which is the more difficult confederation to qualify from. Is it AFC in Asia or is it CONCACAF in North America? And you got to consider that AFC has four and a half spots to CONCACAF's three and a half. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. But that is why I believe Saudi Arabia is probably going to finish last in this group. I know that they're the lowest rated. I know it's easy to say they're going to finish last, but in the last World Cup, that was the exact same situation they're in right now. I don't think that this group is terribly great. I don't think it's super hard to get out of this group because I don't really think that Mexico or Argentina are that overwhelming of teams. Argentina has been so much more consistent over this last year, though, but if you take a look at the better half of the last decade, they have been very underwhelming, right? They didn't do as much as most people wanted them to, at least Messi fans, in the 2018 World Cup, and they've really struggled defensively. When you give up four goals to France, you really can't expect to win that match, no matter if you have Messi up top or not, right? Now, ever since Emmy Martinez has come to uh, get that first spot at goalkeeper in Argentina, they have been more consistent. They won Copa America, led by Lionel Messi, in 2021. And on top of that, they went undefeated in qualifiers, which is a tough CONMEBOL qualifying campaign. So I think they're a little bit more consistent, which is why I have them getting out of this group still. But Mexico has not lived up to a top 10 ranking. They didn't finish above Canada in the qualifiers. And to be fair, nobody did. They finished first. But Mexico did not also beat USA in any of the four chances they had over the last year and a half. And if Mexico cannot consistently beat these teams from CONCACAF, I don't believe that they can consistently beat any of the teams from UEFA or from CONMEBOL, which means that I think that Poland could possibly take that spot from Mexico. The only problem is Poland is a team completely revolving around getting the ball to Lewandowski and trying to mimic, mimic the service that Lewandowski gets at Bayern. And they just can't do it. They don't have that same talent level. So they're forcing the ball to Lewandowski. And every single time they concede a goal, it seems like the floodgates absolutely open. So they're really just throwing away any sort of team chemistry just to try to get the ball to an elite player in Lewandowski. I feel like that is not the way they need to be playing. And it hasn't been working in UEFA Nations League. I'm surprised, honestly, that they qualified for the World Cup. They did what they needed to do, but then again, they were given a pass in the playoff against Russia and then just needed to beat Sweden in the next round. So it was that one-off game that they had to win while all the other UEFA nations that went into the playoff had to play two matches and they didn't get a free pass against Russia. So that is a really big favor that went in terms of Poland's way just to get into the World Cup and they haven't shown that they're capable of getting out of this group, which is why, and it's not that exciting, I think Argentina and Mexico are going to be the top two in this group with Poland in third. And to be honest, I could see Saudi Arabia jump roping Poland for that third spot, but it's the World Cup. Third and fourth doesn't matter. It just matters whether you finish top two. Group D has our reigning World Cup champions in it, and that's France. But for anybody who thinks that they're just a shoe in to win this group no matter what because they're France and they won the 2018 World Cup, I want to bring up a stat that I just looked into right now that might change your mind. Because in 2006, Italy won the World Cup. And then in 2010, they finished last in their group. Dead last in a group that wasn't even really that difficult. Paraguay ended up winning that group. In Italy, the reigning champions got knocked out very, very early. Sure, you could argue players like Cannavaro or Gattuso were on the end of their careers as they entered into that World Cup, but last place in an easy group? That's really surprising, but that's not all. In 2010, Spain ended up winning that World Cup. And then in 2014, they effectively lost their whole campaign for the World Cup in the first two games. And after they lost to Chile in that second game, they were mathematically eliminated from getting to the knockout stages just like that. So there goes the reigning champions out of the group stage again. In 2014, Germany ended up winning it all. And we all know what happened in 2018 when Germany got knocked out by Mexico and South Korea. Germany got grouped. That's three World Cups in a row 
where the winner got grouped the next World Cup. Denmark, however, are a team with really great chemistry that they've been building over the last few years. And we saw it a little bit in Euro 2020 when Christian Eriksen went down and they fought their hearts out for him through the rest of the tournament and ended up making a very, very impressive run. And with young players like Damsgaard coming up through the ranks, along with Captain Christian Eriksen returning for his probably last World Cup, they've got a lot to fight for and they've been putting up results both in the Nations League and in friendlies. Over the past couple of months, they destroyed fellow UEFA member and fellow UEFA World Cup finalist, Serbia, 3-0 last month, and I thought that was a very, very convincing win, which showed that Denmark is a force to be reckoned with in this World Cup, and they'll play with more emotion than anybody. So I think that they're going to top this group, and France, quite frankly, haven't been putting up quite the results that we would expect from a France with this much talent. Maybe they just have too much talent that Didier Deschamps doesn't even know what to do with. He's been trying out so many different midfielders and defenders during the UEFA Nations League. And to be honest, I think he's just got to stick with what he knows, the players that have experience and get them building that chemistry. Because right now, he's been throwing Chalmany in there and throwing new defenders in there and they haven't been getting the results. And yes, it's good to try out the players and figure out what you want for your 23-man roster. But if you go into this World Cup with a team that's not used to playing with each other yet, that's going to be an issue. And it might take a couple games for them to get going. But once they do, France is another team that could definitely win this World Cup. But it's not often that World Cups actually have a back-to-back -back winner. So we'll see if France can end up doing that. Here's the thing though, Tunisia and Australia, I don't believe can compete at that higher level. We talked about Saudi Arabia in the last group and well, Saudi Arabia beat Australia and tied Australia in the qualifiers. They were in the same final group and Australia ended up finishing third in what I'd say was the bare minimum for what they needed to do. The good news is they clutched up in the playoffs, beating UAE from the other group and then ending up beating Peru, which was the more impressive win. I love Australia and I have good friends from there and I would love to see them get out of this group, but quite frankly, I don't see it happening. And Tunisia, I think was the worst team in the 2018 World Cup bar Panama. And they just happened to be in the same group. Those teams are not capable of going too far in these kind of tournaments because not only do you need to have the ability to play at the high level, you've got to have that emotion. Yes, that emotion might come out for a win or a draw in the group stage, but can they consistently do that every single round? The knockout stages are no joke, which is where we see a lot of these African countries that have a great group stage get knocked down, like Ghana back in 2010. So I would love to see Tunisia carry an African country into the uh, knockout stages, but quite frankly, I have them finishing fourth in this group as well. So I've got Denmark in first, France in second, Australia third, Tunisia in fourth. Now, if you made it to the end of today's video, here's the comment question of the day, and I'll make sure to love every single answer down below. I appreciate you making it to the end of the video. The comment question of the day is, Who's winning Golden Boot for 2022 World Cup? And there are some obvious options, and they're good choices like Mbappe, Messi, Ronaldo, Kane. But I'm going to go for a dark horse. I think I might be onto something. I'm going to go Memphis Depay from Netherlands. First off, they have an easy group, which means that they're going to be scoring a lot of goals, and they've scored in every single one of their last 13 matches, Depay being their top goal scorer by a lot, which means I think Netherlands are going to get on the board quite a bit. Memphis Depay also takes their penalties, which means I think he's going to walk away with the golden boot from 2022 Qatar. Let me know what your answer is down below and do not forget to drop a like on the video if you've been enjoying some World Cup 2022 content. The more support you guys show down below with that like button, the more World Cup videos that will come your way. Thank you guys so much for the support and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.